brothers and sisters, <laughs> you're going to be happy you came today. Not just on the radio, but you're going to be happy that you came to the synagogue. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I say Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Now, I believe this is, and I don't see the reference here for some reason. I think it's in Matthew 12. I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll the proverbial dice. Baruch Hashem Well, for some reason, he does not have this recorded here, like he does elsewhere. But if you find it, I'll let you go ahead and find it. Remember when? I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, I did find it. Baruch Hashem. Luke 7. Thank you for saving my soul. Luke chapter 7. See, when you know, you know, there's an old saying among preachers. You come to the point in the message. You come to the point in the sermon. You don't know what the heck you're talking about. And that's where it says in, in the notes, if you've got good notes as a preacher, as a teacher, it says, pound pulpit here. So when you don't know what you're doing as a teacher, you want you don't want anybody to think that you don't know what you're doing and you don't know where to go and you don't know what to say. So you, if you have good notes and you take good notes, it says pound pulpit. I'm talking about, and I'm talking about, because God, woo, you, woo, he's pounding the pulpit. He must know what he's talking about. Look, look at it. Old, old preacher's trick. Pound pulpit here. You know, at the lowest point of your message, pound the hardest. Luke chapter 7. Oh, Baruch Hashem, Wow. Let's start with verse 18. Allow me to sit down, please. Thank you. Luke 7. Don't miss this. The Bissara of Luca. 7 and 18. Then the Talmud game of Yochanan Hamadbil showed him all these things. And Yochanan calling two of his Talmudim sent them to Yahshua, saying, Are you he that should come, or do we look for another? And when the men were come to him, they said, Hey, Yochanan Hamad Biel has sent us to you, Yahshua, saying, Are you he that should come, or should we look for another? Now let's be honest. Did you ever wonder about these verses? I sure have. This is Yochanan Hamadbil, Yeshua's very own flesh and blood, the one prophesied in Yeshayahu chapter 40, the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of Maria. If anybody should know, he cried in the wilderness, he identified the Lamb of Yahweh, he made for the Lamb of Yahweh, and here all of a sudden, he becomes retarded. <laughs> Did you ever wonder? I sure have. Hey, excuse me, John, if you're having a problem identifying Yeshua, I'm going to have a lot more problems because I don't see him. I have to walk by faith and not by sight. You know him. He's your cousin. You mix with him. You put him in the water and you don't know you. If you don't know him, how am I going to know him? What's the answer here? He sent two of his Tommy Dean to Yahshua and said, Yahshua, pardon my interruption, but uh, I'm having a faith crisis. Are you the one who should come, or do we look for another? And the men said to Yeshua, Are you the one, Yochanan sent us, Yochanan Hamadbil, are you the one who should come? So, in religion, this has been presented to us as what? As what? Dig at me. As a faith crisis for Yochanan Hamadbil. Correct? Yes? Is that the way you've heard of this talk? Well, brother, Mordechai, are you sleeping? No. Well, brother, you know that John the Baptist, just like you and me, there are times we believe, and there are times we don't believe. There are times when you have a tough time in faith, and there are times when you have a lot of faith. 
and praise Yahweh that even John the Baptist had a crisis in faith. How many have heard it presented like that? Let me see your hand. Ten Commandments says you shall not lie. Let me see your hand. That's the way I heard it, right? Wrong. Now let's look at it through the eyes of the leper scholar. I said leper scholar. I said leper scholar. Why would Yohanan's tell me deem be so confused about Yeshua's identity? Hadn't Yohanan immersed Yahshua in the Yardane in the distant past? Not too distant past. What had taken place that confused him so much? Something had changed. Are you with me, Rowley? He looked at the dude, Panayim el Panayim, Kara al Kara. But from the time of his mikvah until this time, something had drastically changed. Mm. Ebene Yeshua Synagogue. It's coming. It's coming. Ebene Yeshua Synagogue. To God about Yahweh. Something had drastically changed. What had changed, brothers and sisters, the problem was that Yeshua's physical appearance had changed dramatically. Since they had seen Yeshua at his immersion, now Yahshua appeared to be cursed with leprosy and was nearly unrecognizable to Yohanan Hamadil. Yeshua's appearance was progressively getting worse and worse day by day and it was extremely difficult for them to understand what was happening to Yahshua and why it was happening. It confused them just as it would have confused us had we been there. Tens and thousands of the lost sheep of Israel were totally offended by Yahshua's dreadful physical appearance. So much so that they hid their faces and their faces of their children from Yahshua. Others mocked him unmercifully. Drunkards sang songs about Yahshua and his leprosy in the streets. The sons of darkness mocked and joked about Yeshua's physical appearance relentlessly. As time went on, Yeshua's own friends and even his family became more and more estranged and alienated from him. They kept their distance from him because they believed that Yeshua was unclean. You ever wonder why they didn't go to the feast with him? How many times have you read in the book of Yohanan, he went to the feast alone and his brothers stayed behind because they didn't want to be seen with an unclean leper in public. Not because they didn't believe. They did believe in the Torah. Even though they didn't believe Yeshua was Mashiach, they, his brothers did believe in the Torah. So they would go to them for the Moadim, to Yerushalayim. Are you with me? How come they didn't want to be seen with him? How come John couldn't recognize his own cousin? He had changed his appearance dramatically. Are you with me? Dramatically. Wow. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. His family and friends were estranged and alienated from him. They kept their distance because they believed Yeshua was unclean. Near the end, Yeshua became a total outcast from society who lived in dark places away from friends and family, just like other lepers. But why did Yeshua determine to present his only begotten why did Yahweh determine to present his only begotten son in this fashion? Yahweh was looking for people back then, just as he does today, who do not judge by outward physical appearance. Yahweh looks for people who judge the right way by using Yah Yahweh's insight to measure their inner worth of someone or something. In Yeshua's case, the sheep should have judged Yeshua by what he said and the miracles that he did, not by his appearance. Just blowing you away. When I first read this, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Our Savior, Mashiach, the one with the halo, the one with the blue eyes, and the, and the perfect complexion, the religious perversion, was a leper, a leper scholar. Yes, brothers and sisters. Yay and amen. Now watch this. <laughs> 